So as you can see, we've got our rectangle with our inverted corners. And just so you know that if we wanted to actually create this object, this rectangle with inverted corners, we very simply could have gone to create rectangle, made a square, created a width of eight, of eight inches, which automatically changes it to height, the height uh, proportionately because it's a square. And we could have inverted the corners and changed this to a one inch radius. And it would have given us exactly what we've created here. Um, the reason that we didn't do it that way, of course, is because we were able to use several different tools in order to accomplish this, which um, gives us the opportunity to familiarize ourselves with those tools. So the next part of our project is going to be to add some text. So down here in the bottom left corner, we have a tool called Create Vector Text. And as you can see, when I open up Create Vector Text, uh, all of the different functions of the text tool appear. Now, you'll notice under Font, if I go to the left corner of this, and I need to just move this over a bit, you can see that I have several fonts. In fact, there are probably well over 100 fonts here available to me. Basically, every font that's available on this particular computer is available to me using our Cam Express. So if I have a copy of Corel Draw, if I have a copy of Adobe Illustrator, if I have a copy of uh, Microsoft Office, uh, all of the fonts in those various programs would be available to me on our Cam Express. Now, you'll notice that several of these fonts have the letters TT beside them. TT stands for True Type Font. And a true type font is really not designed for machining, it's designed for printing. Now many of these true type fonts will work just fine, and if you select them, the chances are that they may work okay. Uh, some of them will not, and the reason is, again, because they're not really designed for machining applications, they're designed for printing, and we're going to be machining them. A couple of problems exist with some fonts. One of them is that sometimes the fonts are... Um, made of disconnected vectors. So you have those unjoined vectors like you saw in the last video. Uh, and that would mean that you're going to have a little bit of cleanup to do in order to join those together. The other problem that exists, and particularly when you get into cursive fonts, is that occasionally the fonts will overlap. So you'll have one letter overlapping the other. And this will cause confusion for the software when it creates the toolpath, because it won't know what to machine and what not to machine. So true type fonts sometimes work, sometimes they don't. It's a bit of a crapshoot with those. Above that, you see that there are several other fonts that have the at sign to the left of them. These are really engraving type fonts, really more designed for an engraver as opposed to a CNC router. Um, and so the problem with engraving fonts is they're single line fonts. And when you try to machine them, basically they're going to machine very shallow because they're just going to basically pierce the surface of the material. If the material was completely flat, it would probably work. But what we find is that many times material is not completely flat. And so you may have some areas that are slightly over machined, other areas that are not machined at all. So they're not a good choice either. The good news is we actually have something you can use. And you'll see this list of fonts here at the top with the A to the left of them. And if you'll notice, it is curiously like the A in the ArtCam logo. No uh, coincidence there. It's, these are ArtCam design fonts specifically designed for machining applications. So I'm going to use this one here called Engraver. You'll see that I can set the size of this font. In this case, I'm going to set it at one inch. And very simply, just moving the cursor over to the screen, left clicking, and start to type. I'm going to type in general CNC. And when I'm done, I'm going to click Create. And I'm going to center our font in the center of our workspace. You see it's a little bit large for our material. The transform tool, which you tend to use the transform tool a lot because it has a lot of different functions, particularly to resize things very quickly. So with the aspect ratio maintained, I know that that rectangle we created was eight inches uh, in uh, size. So I'm gonna make our text seven inches so it'll fit nicely inside. And so we've created our line of text and it's sitting inside of our rectangle.